When you go into the field to hunt, wherever it may be, whatever you're after, you're bound to encounter certain situations, often when you least expect them, where you'll have to make an important and maybe even a fateful decision. Sometimes when hunting, you'll have ample time to judge the safety of the situation. But in other cases, things happen so fast you have to make an almost instinctive split-second decision on whether a shot is safe or unsafe. In this film, we're going to confront you with a variety of hunting situations as though you were the hunter. In each one, there will come a point where a shot is about to be taken. Then you'll have a few seconds to decide shoot or don't shoot, based on what you saw. In this way, you can test your own judgment and reaction to situations that are likely to occur when you are actually out hunting. Here you're out after woodchucks. Saddle in, relax, and take a quiet look around. Hunting is a waiting game mostly, and that's part of the real pleasure of it, looking, listening, taking in the feeling of being outdoors. This is perfect chuck country. Open farmlands, old stone walls, plenty of good food and places for a woodchuck to burrow. Just keep watching, waiting, looking around. There you go. Now, slowly, deliberately, you don't want to spook him. Safety off. Steady. Now. Ready. Should he take this shot or not, you make the judgment. Absolutely not. Did you see that pond back there? If a high-powered bullet hit that, well, imagine this. That's right, a ricochet can go anywhere. That shot could have been a complete disaster. It's fall in the deep woods, a perfect time and a perfect place to go after gray squirrels. You and your friend are only carrying 22s but you know they can easily travel a mile or more, so you're careful. Funny thing about squirrels, when you're out walking, you see them everywhere. But when you're hunting them, they just seem to up and disappear. Well, they're bound to be somewhere. In a situation like this, your senses get all keyed up so your eyes and ears can fool you. Is that a bushy tail over there? Do I hear a gray squirrel chattering? Or is it only a chipmunk? What's that over there? Watch and wait. There's plenty of time. Hold it a second. There, over there, on that big tree. And the guy that spots him gets the shot. A prone position is the best. And it's a clear shot, right against that big tree. But is it safe? You decide. Sure, it was a safe shot. That's right. Unload first before going to get him. You were shooting at a down angle at the base of a big tree with plenty of earth in the background. But don't worry if you got this one wrong. It's always better to hold off on a shot than to make one you may regret. Nice shooting there, friend. 
Now it's your buddy's turn. When you're staked out on your post, watching quietly for white-tailed deer, you're practically invisible, except for your blaze orange, which, of course, is the reason you wear it. The drill for deer season is simple. Up at dawn, out to the woods, find a spot, stand perfectly still all day long, and try not to freeze to death. The colder you get, the more you begin to feel you've been standing here just about forever, pretending you're only another tree, watching the same old spots for the slightest movement, listening for the faintest sound. A bit of quiet body English will keep some circulation going anyway. What's that? Over there. Well? Did you say shoot? Then look at what you would have shot. That's right, another hunter. And this is not an unrealistic situation. Hey! I almost shot Many you. deer hunters get killed every year by other hunters who shoot too quickly. Never shoot at just a sound. Never shoot at just movement. Be 100% certain of your target before you ever touch that trigger. Drag your deer out of the woods and wear blaze arms. Birds? We're gonna knock them cold. This place was great a year ago. I don't know why it wouldn't be now. Nothing's yeah, really changed. Sounds like you guys really got into them. Oh, we did. It was good. Real good. You're in prairie country, out after doves. So you're in a situation that can really require a split-second judgment. Those birds come in low, fast, and erratic. You can never tell which way they'll break. Put we'll it on the right or here. I'll go in the middle right here. Now there's one over there. I'll go grab it. The lady elects to take the right position, the man in the plaid shirt, the center, and the third hunter moves out to the left. In dove shooting, you have to keep a low profile and stay out of sight. Otherwise, they'll spot you. And all we have to do is find some birds. Dave, I think there's some coming low out there. You see them? Okay, I got them. Yeah, here they come. Should he shoot? No, sir. And he never should have swung that far to the right to begin with. This is what you saw him doing. Tracking clear over until he's right on top of that other shooter. There's a sight picture you'd better never see. His zone of fire stopped right here. You should have an image of your own fire zone in mind at all times, as well as the fire zone of your hunting companions. So memorize this picture and never forget it. Here you're out in the big open country the far west after pronghorn antelope. There's a nice herd about a quarter mile off. But antelope spook easily and can take off in high gear before you know it. So you have a little problem. How to stalk them and get within 150 yards or so for a sure shot. Work your way downwind and pick up whatever cover you can. Slow and quiet now. You've got a little cover here. Good. Now get relaxed and steady. Okay. Perfect target. One last look. Now.
Now, squeeze it off easy. Of course not. There's no way that could have been a safe shot. You saw that building back there, or should have, right in line with the game. If you check this one, shoot, you've got no business even thinking about hunting. No business at all. Early morning, cold and drizzling. A perfect opening day for duck season. So you head for the river with a few friends. Friends include a couple of fine black Labradors that'll really enjoy this day. The river's been a favorite spot for mallards for as long as anyone can remember. So you head for the old familiar blinds you've used for many years now. Why don't you guys take that blind over there? Good luck with Two the people to a blind, and each group takes a dog. Every year you wonder, will the birds come back one more time? No, you never know for sure. How will the new decoys work? And what about yourself? Will your eyes and reflexes be as good as ever? This is the time for answers. They're over there to our right. Just check on the others. Our shots will be straight away or off to the left. Fire zones, remember? There they come, right on schedule. You take it from here. Right you are. A straightaway shot. Your first clean kill where everything you've learned comes together. That's a thrill you'll remember for the rest of your life. Come on, Jake. Of course there are safe shots. You just want to be sure, that's all. The conifer slopes of the west during the fall. That's a good time and a good place to go for mule deer. You've scouted this area earlier and seen a few. They're beginning to move down from the mountains now, heading for the lower alpine valleys where they'll find the kind of browse they need to get through the winter. You know and love these woods. And for now, there's no place you'd rather be. we have here. Droppings. Fairly fresh, too. They've been moving through here all right. So find a spot that'll make a good lookout post. No guarantee you'll see them. But then there aren't any sure bets in hunting. That's part of the excitement. Here you go. From up here, you'll have a clear view of the whole valley. So settle in and wait. Maybe late afternoon before they move out there to feed, if at all. This is one of the great things about hunting. You get all the time in the world to contemplate some grand scenery. And somehow, as a hunter, you feel more a part of this valley and these rocks and hills than if you were merely strolling through. There you go. But she's taking off. No, she's turning now. Coming right back up the valley. Those are legal this year, and they're certainly fine eating. Okay now, just a little lead.
don't shoot, look again. Did you see it? Once more now. There, another hunter. Without blaze orange, you'd never spot him. And it was almost impossible to see him to begin with, which is why you always have to look beyond your target. Remember, in the field, you never get a second look. If you want some really fine sport, take some beagles with you and take off okay, after rabbits. Okay, okay, this looks good. Let's let the dogs loose here. Come on, Grace. Grace, back. Funny thing about hounds, they either have it or they don't. These dogs have it. Okay, Brian, you're off to the left. Charles, you're off to the right. Keep a careful eye on where your companions are now. A little bit further forward there, Charles. A straight line formation is usually the best. Just watch that brush pile in front of us. We're going to start working it right away. Let's back. Yeah, yeah. Get him up, get him up, get him up. There he goes. If you like beagles, this is pretty thrilling music. Yeah, they hit a check there. Now wait, they're gonna circle Even the best dogs back. can lose a scent, especially in the snow. Brian, Speck is real hot there. Watch to your left. There's a rabbit in there somewhere, and he'll be yours if the dogs pop him out. Right. Okay, Brian, good move. The dogs are too close. You can't take a chance. You bet they were. Let's look at that move again. There's not one spot where the rabbit is clear of the dogs. And that's a classic sight picture that comes up time and again in this kind of hunting. Let's start moving up there. Try to get in front of the rabbit off to your left. Okay, let's go find a new position. Maybe you'll get a clear shot this time. Want to see some beautifully trained dogs? Watch. Czar. Up. You'll need dogs like these to go for pheasant. Pheasant hunting's an art, and fine bird dogs have been bred just for this for centuries. These two Springer Spaniels love their work. Hand signals and a whistle. One to stop. Okay. Get on. Two to go. There's real instinct and a lot of skillful training in every move they make. They've got sharp eyesight, a keen nose, and cover a lot of territory as they crisscross back and forth. It's their day just as much as yours, and you're really working this field together. If there's a pheasant anywhere around, they'll find it. Okay, heads up Watch now. Watch your dog. Watch your dog. They're on bird. Safe. That was a dream shot. Watch. The bird takes off and she's always in her zone of fire while tracking it. Zar! Never be afraid to take a shot that's yours and you know is safe. After all, that's what hunting's all about. Good dog. Good dog. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good dog. That's a good dog. Thank you. Isn't that a lovely bird? A day a of field with shot. two beautiful dogs. That oh, says almost gonna... everything about this sport. Let's go. The open range country of the far west seems to go on forever. That's why it's ideal for big game animals like antelope. They need a lot of room to roam. So if you want to catch up with them out here, 
you've got to be prepared to do a bit of roaming yourself. On these dirt roads, a pickup truck is as good a way to do that as any. But you may have a long drive ahead before you see anything. Well, let's pull over here and take a look around. Hold on, what's that? Yep, they're out there all right. This isn't gonna be easy. Flat as a pancake from you to them and no cover in between. <laughs> 